In this video, we explore the power of Android when it comes to localization, making our apps work in more than one language. The objectives are stated here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. Okay, so to get ready for this demo, it'd be great if you went out and read on the Providing Resources tab at developer.android.com. If you familiarize yourself with the Configuration Qualifier Names, Table 2, under Providing Resources, and also read the section on localization. So this is going to be further resources and a look at localization. Now, when you look at inside your resource folder, you're going to see that you have four drawable folders. And all these drawable folders have a dash and then a four digit or five digit extension. If we look back at the chart, I was just referencing and it says, let me just go ahead and cover those up, we know they're these first four that are being referencing right here, these four extensions that are dashed off the drawable folder. And it says low density screens, meaning they have 120 DPI approximately. Medium density, 160 DPI. High density, 240 DPI, and of course that's dots per inch. And extra high density, which is approximately 320 uh, dots per inch DPI. Okay, so what that means is that depending upon the resolution of your screen, your Android is automatically going to pull the resource from the correct drawable folder so that your application can look the best it can possibly look. Now just in case you haven't worked with graphics that much, let's just look at a very high level overview on a sketch that I've drawn out before we start working with these. Why do we have all four of these folders? So what I've done here is drawn a little simulation of a low density screen which has 120 dots per inch and a high density screen which has 240 dots per inch and I've drawn one dot for every 10. So these 12 dots represent 120 dots and these 24 dots represent 240 dots because I certainly wasn't going to put 240 dots on the screen. Okay, so increase that by 10. So imagine then that you had 120 uh, pixels in some image that you had. It had 120 pixels going across. So then you know that if it had 120 pixels going across that it would cover up this much space on 120 DPI. And this box represents, I didn't specifically state that, one inch. And then that is that one inch represented on the screen of an Android device. So, but then again, if you had that same graphic rendered on a higher resolution screen, then it's going to really appear about half the size because it's still going to take up just the 120 DPI, but on a 240 DPI uh, screen, it's going to look half the size. And so again here, I'm going to fill in the whole amount, and I'm assuming I'm 120 by 120, like something square there, going in both directions. But here, I'm only going to take up about half the size. And that's why we have these folders. So that if I'm in a low density screen and I have something 120 by 120, great, maybe that's the size I want it to be. But if I'm in a high density screen like we were just looking at, I might render that same image in 240 by 240 to take up the same amount of screen real estate on the higher density screen. So that's why we have all of these folders. It's also interesting to note that if I didn't supply my graphics in all four ways, that it would pick the best match and scale it in most cases. So if I only supplied the medium density screen and was on a low density screen, it would try to scale that down. Or if I was on a low density and I'm on a medium, it's going to try to scale that up. Okay, so now what does this have to do with localization? Well, what I wanted to do is to use some images to help make the localization um, a little bit more fun and start by using localization of images and then go to the more traditional localization which we do in the values folder. But I thought I'd start with these images folder. Now back to this chart. This chart 
all of these items inside this column, the second column, if we go up to the top, what do we call that column? The qualifier values. All of these items in the qualifier values are actually intended to be used as folder names, parts of a folder name, as you've already seen in use with the uh, HDPI and LDPI and so on. So in a drawable folder, we came up with four different folders and we supported these four different options for our screen density. Well, if you, and these are listed in order of precedence. In other words, um, at the very top of the chart, which isn't, I don't really see this used very often, the mobile country code and mobile network code trump all. So it has to be the, if you were going to use it, it would have to be the very first qualifier listed in your folder name, followed by the second highest, and we generally think of this as the highest because these just aren't commonly used, which is basically saying the network I'm on and where my phone is, is more important than any other setting. It will trump and it has to be listed first in the folder name, followed by these language codes and followed by everything else we see on this chart. What does that mean for us practically? Well, for the demo I'm doing today, we can see that language and region codes are listed above in the chart for our screen density, which means if we were going to create additional folders, we would have to have the language code before the screen density code. Now, what does that mean practically when we look at our application? So I'm going to do is build an application that supports four different languages, but because I'm embarrassed to say I only speak one language and barely is English, um, I'm going to have a little fun with this. And if we go to this chart here again that shows us all our language codes, and let me just talk about these for a minute if you're not familiar with them. This is your language code, and this is your region code. So you can have a language, and you can have regional dialects of the language, like French, and uh, in France and French and Canadian. So you can have different regional dialects of particular languages. I'm going to leave the regional dialects out of this demo and go just with the languages and without the regions. So if we look at this, co this uh, chart here that it's referencing, it lists all the language codes that are available for us. And so that I can just have a little fun with this, I've looked already at some of these codes and I've determined that there are some language codes that I want to deal with and kind of, uh, well, basically geek this out. And if you scan down through this chart, you'll see that there is RO for Romanian. And there is uh, FR for French and ZH for Chinese and EN for English and so on. And so I'm going to impose my own meanings on this to make this more fun for me and hopefully for you. Where the EN means English, I'm going to make that just be the universal language for planet Earth. And FR is French, but I'm actually going to make FR stand for Ferengi. RO for Romanian is now going to be Romulan. And ZH, which is actually the code for Chinese, is going to refer to a zombie. Okay, so maybe there's a good episode of zombies out in Star Trek. That That might be the unmade episode that still needs to be made, or if it was, I forgot about it. So th that's how I'm going to work with these codes rather than actually have them uh, translate a particular language, but all of the concepts will be exactly the same. So that's what I'm working with. So now, again, we see that, reminding you, we see that these codes appeared above the screen density codes. They appeared above on the chart. Okay, here's the critical portion. Which means when I'm back in my Eclipse application, if I come in here to my drawable folder, I might say I want another drawable folder and here's what I'm going to do. Come into res and say I need a new folder. And I'm going to say I need a drawable dash fr dash MDPI. And we just make a couple more and then I'm going to discuss them. And then I want another folder, which is going to be a drawable, 
which is going to be RO for Romanian dash MDPI. And we're going to make yet another folder. And ZH for uh, zombie. All right, now, what did I do here? I had to list these language codes before the screen resolution because they were listed above it in the chart. So that's the first thing to realize. The second thing to realize is that I did not create a folder for EN for English. I'm relying on this folder to do that. So it's going to, if I'm set to Romulan, it's going to find this folder. If I'm set to French, it's going to find this folder. If I'm set to Chinese or zombie, as I'm calling it, I'm going to find this folder. But if I'm set to any other language or set to English, I'm going to find this folder. So having one folder for the language that isn't named after the language to be the default language is always a good choice, rather than if I specified this one here to also be English, EN, on this folder, and I didn't have a default folder, what would happen if we had it set to some other language other than the four we specified? So the best model to work with is if you have four languages, name three of them and have one be the default language, and typically we choose English to be the default language. Okay, so now the other thing to realize is um, if I was going to make a drawable folder for every single one of these languages and every single one of these resolutions, I just took this to be 16 folders, didn't I? So I'm just going to target the medium density, and I made the three other for Ferengi, Romulan, Zombie, and I left this one alone to be the Planet Earth folder. If I wanted to create a graphic for all of those situations, all screen densities and all languages, then I would have to render 16. Now, that's why language comes before screen density. Because if I'm set to Romulan and I'm on an extra high density screen, it's not going to use the extra high density drawable. It's going to use the Romulan medium density drawable and scale it up because language is above screen density on that chart. So it's going to choose the correct language over choosing the correct size drawable. And that's why we had that order of precedence chart. So now what's my idea here? is that I'm going to come in and grab an image of John Luc Picard that I have right here and I'm going to drop that into the default folder for English or Planet Earth and I copy it in. And if we double click on that you'll see that I just put in an image of John Luc Picard. And then I'm going to rename that background because I'm going to make this the background image in my application. Refactor background. And then I'm going to come into the Ferengi folder, and I'm dropping in a picture of Quark. And we'll see that we have a picture of Quark in there. And I'm going to rename this background. I have to give them all the same name, and the idea is they're dynamically going to be swapped out. If I'm set to English, I see Picard. If I'm set to Ferengi, I see Quark, and so on. So we're going to refactor, rename. I had those all in the same folder, so I couldn't have named them all background in advance. Background. And remember, all lowercase names, all lowercase, and the extensions are ignored. And then if I'm Romulan, that's the photo we're going to see. And I'm going to refactor, rename background. 